Well, I'm currently experiencing that strange scenario where I'm not busy working. I'll thank the uh, several inches of rain we've had for that one and uh, seize the opportunity to make some videos. Uh, this one I need to do is about the removable rear apron or the lance on my 74 Super Beetle because I'm just getting so many questions about it. So a lot of people have seen the removable apron in both my old uh, V-Dub engine removal video and also the video I put up when I removed my old EJ22 Subaru motor. Uh, I've seen the um, removable apron in that and I just get a lot of questions about it so here's just a I'll try and give a brief explanation about how I made it happen uh, but basically it's one of those mods that isn't really all that common um, but once you've done it uh, you'll wonder how you ever survived without it um, I certainly wouldn't be going and doing it to a nice original paint 6 volt beetle but um, for most late model daily drivers it just makes life so much easier uh, and like most modifications there's just so many different ways you can do it um, I did this one uh, three years ago now uh, but I did have another beetle as well that had this same mod done um, about 20 years ago sometime in the early 90s this one's changed a little bit since I first put it in uh, it now runs a fiberglass rear apron um, I did run the original for a year or so but uh, I'll explain that a bit later on um, so visually uh, aside from being the bubbly type apron see my original flat one on the bench there nothing's visually any different um, a lot of people use those ugly fixing clamp things to hold them in place I really didn't want to ruin the look of my bug by using them so nothing visually different uh, from the rear now uh, this is my new environmentally friendly engine uh, the hamsters just on his lunch break but uh, you can see the uh, even from the inside nothing looks all that different I'm too lazy to run a, a deck lid seal uh, they don't do all that much aside from stopping the deck lid rattling so this one I'll just remove is held by the lower fender bolts but first I'll just explain about removing the original um, if your apron is the factory fitted one uh, they're not terribly difficult to fit. Uh, the factory spot welds are very easy to um, drill out and the tack welds are no hassle to grind off but if you've got a bug that's had a replacement apron fitted and a lot have because uh, it's pretty hard to go through uh, four decades or so without having a rear end accident of some sort um, replacement ones can be welded on in uh, all sorts of manners but it's pretty rare that they are welded on uh, spot welded like the factory ones but I was lucky my original was completely um, untouched and we can see here the battle scars from being removed so the first thing I did to remove it was cleaned up this area 
and you can see all the spot welds. And I then got in and drilled them out. As well as the, uh, the little weld just there had to be cut through. And where it was spot welded um, along there has actually been cut off by me as I no longer needed that section but enjoy the pretty picture and showing the locations of the spot weld and the tack weld at the bottom. So once all those spot welds are drilled out and the couple of tack welds are ground off, uh, the apron with a bit of jiggling, maybe some prying with a screwdriver should uh, break free from the body and come off. Now I never did any actual prep to this thing after it was removed. The uh, edges where I cut didn't even go rusty but there are some uh, jagged spots but all that's hidden under the fender beading. So um, at this stage I was thinking to hold it in place what I was going to do so I didn't have to run any clips was weld a washer into that area there where the fender bolt goes through in that spot and also down in the bottom corner so the fender bolts would go through it and clamp lock it in place but what I did find was once I put it all back together the gap there where the uh, original apron slides down inside, once the fender bolts there and there were tightened up, they actually clamped the uh, apron in place really firmly, enough that um, you could grab it and swing off it and it would not move. And even up here, once I repainted all the raw edges, the little gap up here was about all you could tell um, had been altered. It was completely an invisible mod aside from those two cuts on the seal area. Here's a shot of it with the uh, Volkswagen motor back in. So there's my original apron, the proper flat one for this car, back in place. And as you can see, it looks like it was never even removed. The only difference is, uh, if you look very closely, you can see the little weld just there. And over there have been cut through. And uh, the deck lid seal. Once you put it back in its channel, absolutely no different. With the deck lid shut. You'd never know any different. Um, and once those um, two fender bolts on either side are clamped up, it's really firmly held in place. So um, that's the benefit of it. I only swapped to the fiberglass one as I change my exhaust layout and no longer had two outlets so I went to the single one on the side and the uh, fiberglass one has got a bit more of a lip and there's the hole where the fender bolt goes through so it's held in place just as well so to remove it um, all it needs is those 
obviously first the bumper removed and uh, the two fender bolts uh, they don't even need removing actually they just need loosening seal removed and um, off it comes easy now um, makes various engine work easy like removing and replacing the exhaust but the biggest advantage obviously is engine removal so much easier everyone will say oh you don't need to jack it up anymore which is true you can get the engine out with the wheels on the ground but you do still need to climb in under there and remove the engine bolts so I still jack it up but it doesn't have to be real high at all with the standard one to get with the apron still attached you have to get it pretty friggin high to get a Volkswagen motor to come out from underneath that's the worst part of it and when you have a really huge jack like I do it's made even worse unless you drop the engine on the ground and walk it out um, now people will crap on that with it not attached you might lose strength blah -de blah blah um, Something's probably lost, but it's not enough to lose sleep over. This area is still very stiff and rigid. And even more so once the bumper bolts back on. So this has been done for years. And as I said, my old Black Beetle was done for uh, over 20 years with no problems at all using the same fiberglass apron. So that's about the gist of the removable rear apron. And if people are wondering why there's a bit of a void in my engine bay, um, when I can find my 12 spline CV bolt tool, uh, I'm going to pull my gearbox out and give it some love. It's a bit of a oil leaking issue, uh, the nose cones leaking oil badly so I've got to pull the nose cone off and reseal that and possibly the bushing in the shift rod housing that's uh, poor old gearbox is uh, 12 years old now and copped a bit of abuse over the years so give it some love